So in this video, we're going to look at 10.1, which is parametric equations. And there's a couple things that we do with parametric equations. So the first thing that I'm going to go over is how to get a rectangular equation given parametric equations. This is not something that you would be asked to do. Um, it's also asking you to sketch, but I already have the sketches there for you, which is also not something that you would be asked to do. I'm reviewing it. This is something that you have seen before, and there are going to be some problems where it is really helpful to know what the picture looks like, and I'll go through an example um, later in the video and explain why it would be useful to know what the graph is going to look like or what the equation would be, um, but you don't have to. So you can solve the problems without necessarily knowing what they look like or knowing what the rectangular equation is but I'm gonna review it in case that's something that is gonna be useful to you. So the other things that we're gonna look at in this video are taking derivatives of parametric equations and finding length of, cur of parametric curves. So this first one, the parametric equations that they give you are x equals cosine t, y equals sine t for the, in the interval zero to two pi, which would be a circle and it would be the unit circle. So this should look familiar because if x equals cosine and y equals sine, that's how the unit circle is defined. So that's going to be the unit circle. So the rectangular equation would be x squared plus y squared equals one, which is the equation of the unit circle. This one, x equals three cosine t, y equals two sine t, interval zero to four pi. So the interval, because this one is um, four pi instead of two pi, it would be going around this twice. So the graph would look the same if it was zero to two pi or zero to four pi. Um, it just, if you were using that interval to, for example, find the length, you would be going around it twice. You'd be finding double that length. This one is an ellipse. So the cosine and the sine make it similar to a circle. And then because the coefficients are different, that's why it's an ellipse instead of a circle. And the way that you get the rectangular equation for this is you isolate the trig functions. So I have x over three equals cosine and y over two equals sine. And then I use the trig identity that cosine squared plus sine squared equals one. So it's gonna be this squared plus this squared equals one. So x squared over nine plus y squared over four equals one. So that would be the equation of this ellipse. And then this one, x equals square root of t, y equals t minus two. Because you have the square root here, that's why it's only half of this parabola. It's also only half because it's telling you that the interval is zero to four. But even if it didn't give you this interval, we can't have a negative value of t. So that also means I can't have a negative value of x. This one is gonna be a little bit different as far as eliminating the parameter. And eliminating the parameter is another way of saying get the rectangular equation. So get an equation in terms of X and Y instead of two equations in terms of T. So what you would do here is you pick one of the equations, solve it for T, and then plug it into the other one. So this one, X squared equals T. And then I'm gonna plug that in here. So I have Y equals X squared minus two. So this would be the rectangular equation that represents this. The domain would have to be restricted because in this one you could have negative x values, but in the original equation you can't. So that's something to keep in mind, not something that I think would show up in problems, but just be careful with that uh, with the domain. So this is one of the things that you definitely do need to know, and it's something that you haven't seen before, is the um, how to take the derivative of parametric equations. So the first derivative is pretty straightforward. dy dx is dy dt over dx dt. So you're just taking the derivative of the y equation divided by the derivative of the x equation. That's it. The second derivative is when things get a little bit confusing. And to be honest, usually if something like this shows up, it's probably gonna be a multiple choice question. It's usually pretty straightforward derivatives, but there's something in this formula that a lot of people forget to do. So I wanted to go over this because it's not quite as straightforward. So I'm gonna explain where this formula comes from because there is a step, kind of a step in between, but 
basically another reason why this formula works. So if you are doing d dt of dy dx, if we want this to be equal to this, so I mean, it's not really d squared, this is just the notation, but if you think about it as d squared y over dx squared, here, if I distributed this in, which again, you're not actually distributing, it's an operation you're doing, but you can kind of think of it that way. So if I distributed this in, it is going to be d squared y on the top, but on the bottom, it's not what we want it to be. So what I need is for the dt to cancel. So I need oops, multiply. I need this dt to cancel, so there's got to be a dt on top that's going to cancel that. And then in order for this to be squared, I need a dx on the bottom. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this and I'm multiplying by dt dx, which if you rewrite that with division, that's the same thing as dividing by the reciprocal of this. So dividing by dx dt. This is really the formula you're using. You're not actually using this formula. I just wanted to show you where this comes from. So the second derivative, you're taking the derivative of what you got up here but you also need to divide by the derivative of your x equation. That's the part that most people forget. And it's really easy to forget to do it, but try really hard to remember it. Um, another thing you could do is you can eliminate the parameter. So what we did on the previous page, and then just take the first derivative and the second derivative normally. The only problem with that is if it's multiple choice, your answer choices are probably gonna be in terms of t, so you probably want to do it this way, but if it does happen to show up in a free response, then you do have the option of eliminating the, eliminating the parameter and doing the derivatives normally. And then what this means is derivative of this um, with respect to t, so the wrt is with respect to, and then derivative of the x equation with respect to t. So it's pretty intuitive to take the derivative of what you get up here, but the part that most people forget is that denominator. This is something you've seen before, but not in parametric. So you've seen it in rectangular. So this is arc length. So in rectangular, you saw it, it was integral from a to b of one plus dy dx squared dx. So the only difference here is if you have parametric equations, then you have to take the derivative of both of the equations and square them. So it's going to be the integral from your first t value to your second t value, and then square root of each of the derivatives squared and added together. So it'll be in terms of t instead of in terms of x. So I'm going to go through some problems here. So this one does ask to sketch. I already have the picture here for you. Again, that's not something you'd be asked to do. Sometimes it's helpful to have the sketch. This is definitely not something that you would be asked to sketch without a calculator. And even with a calculator, you probably would not be asked to sketch it, but your calculator does have parametric mode. So that something that may be useful for you if you wanted to see what the pictures look like. So this is your answer to part A. Part B, the highest point on the curve so in parametric mode, you don't have the same options as in um, function mode. So you're not going to be able to like second trace calculate the maximum. So what you're going to have to do for something like this, you can use a calculator to help you, but you are going to have to do some of the calculus by hand. So highest point is when the derivative is going to be equal to zero. So we need to find dy dx. So the derivative of the y equation is going to be 2 cosine t, derivative of the x equation, 2t, and we're going to set that equal to 0. The 2's cancel, so I have cosine t over t equals 0. This is going to be equal to 0 when the top is equal to 0, which is just cosine t equals 0, which is going to be at pi over 2. Um, and the highest point, so you also need to make sure to go back and look at what the question is asking. So it's not asking where does it occur or at what t value, it's asking what is the actual highest point. So you have to take this t value and plug it back into your original equations to get the actual point. And so that's something that you would have to do in the calculator if you needed the decimal. 
because this one's not going to work out nicely, you can leave it as the exact answer. So you could leave it as pi squared over 4 minus 5. But I'm just going to plug this one into the calculator. Remember that you need three numbers after the decimal. This one right there. You can have more, but you need at least um, you need at least three. And then this one is just going to be two. So this would be your answer to part B. Points of inflection. So we need the second derivative. So second derivative. I need to take the derivative of this. So I'm going to need to do quotient rule with that. T times negative sine T. Um, this is just going to be cosine over t squared, and then divided by the derivative of the x equation, so divided by 2t. And then I'm going to simplify it a little bit. This is something that you would have to do in the calculator to actually solve it, but I'm going to simplify it before I plug stuff into the calculator. Um, I guess there's not that much to simplify here. Minus cosine t. So dividing by 2t is the same as multiplying by 1 over 2t, or yeah, 1 over 2t. This is going to be 2t cubed. And I want to set that equal to 0. And again, the entire thing is going to be 0 when just the top is equal to 0. So I um, plug this into y equals and find where that is equal to 0, which is going to be at 2.5. 7, 9, 8. So this is the t value, and then you would have to plug that in to the original equation to get the um, oops, to get the actual point. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I didn't do that beforehand. When you are doing something like this, be really careful that you are using at least three numbers after the decimal place, because then this isn't the final answer. I need to take that and plug it in to something else. And so once you then start doing operations with that, it's possible that it gets farther and farther away from the actual correct answer. So you just want to be careful not to round anything in the intermediate steps. And then two sine So then the answer that you get for this one is going to be 2.828 and 0.673. I truncated instead of rounded. You can do either one. So you need three numbers after the decimal place, truncated or rounded. So if you had this as a nine or this as a four, that's also fine. So this would be your point of inflection and the length of the curve. So that's going to be the integral from zero to pi. And so that gives you the zero to pi is up here in the original problem. So this is going to be, the derivative of this is 2t, so it'll be 2t squared. And then derivative of this is 2 cosine t. This is not something that you would be able to do by hand, so you would have to plug that into the calculator. And the answer you should get is 11.268. Make sure you are in radian mode. It's safe to be in radian mode for everything, but especially if you have trig. So this one um, wasn't asking you to sketch it, but it is going to be a circle. So it's asking you to find the length. So 0 to 2 pi. The derivative of this is going to be cosine. Derivative of this is going to be negative sine. So this is cosine squared plus sine squared. This is going to turn into positive because I'm squaring it. Cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. So that is a trig identity you need to know. So then it's just dt. So your answer is going to be t from 0 to 2 pi. So your answer is 2 pi. So here's an example where it is helpful if you know what the shape is. Because this is a circle, you don't actually need to do it with an integral. If it's asking you to find the length of the curve, that's really just asking you for the circumference. So the circumference of the unit circle is 2 pi. This one is, I mean, we, you have the picture here. It doesn't really help you. It looks like if you turned these, it's going to be a circle, but it's not. It kind of looks like that, but it's not going to be. So we are going to have to actually compute the derivatives and do this one um, 
using an integral. So um, the derivative of this one, I'm just going to do these up here, is going to be 3 cosine squared times negative sine t, and then it's dx dt, dy dt is going to be 3 sine squared t times cosine t. So this is going to be now this one you want to be careful you can't actually go 0 to 2 pi because at these cusps the derivatives don't exist so what you're going to have to do is find a portion of it so if i go 0 to pi over 2 so if i just find one piece of it and multiply by the four pieces then i will find the length of the whole thing so this is going to be square root of this whole thing squared so that's going to turn into 9 cosine to the fourth sine squared plus 9 sine to the fourth cosine squared t. Something like this, you would not be asked to, oops, I forgot the t in there. You wouldn't be asked to evaluate. So a lot of times these questions are going to be um, set up, but do not evaluate. So you could just leave your answer like this. It does simplify a little bit. You can factor some stuff out. Um, but you're not going to be able to factor out a whole lot, and you're not going to be able to evaluate it by hand. And then this one. So this one, you can see it's just setting up. It's not actually evaluating. Um, so change the color. So the derivative of the x equation, 2 cosine t, negative sine t, and then dy dt is going to be... 3 sine squared t cosine t. And so you are going to have to simplify a little bit with this one. Um, you are going to end up getting a as your final answer once you simplify. So you do need to know a little bit of some trig identities with these. Um, particularly the uh, Pythagorean identity is one that you would need to know. Um, sometimes with something like this, you end up just factoring stuff out of radicals. When we get into 10.3, there are a couple other trig identities you need to know, but for now, the big one is going to be the Pythagorean identity to look out for, because occasionally you have stuff like the one I did with the circle, where stuff does simplify, and then you are going to have to actually evaluate that integral, but a lot of times it's going to be something like this, where it simplifies a little bit, but you're just setting it up, but not actually evaluating it, unless it's a calculator question.